to today's vinyasa flow class. Today we're going to be focusing on our hips and our side body. It's two areas in the body that I love to work on. I feel like we don't give them enough time in general. We're going to get started in a tabletop position. So I'd like you to come onto all fours, uh, stacking your hands underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. Spreading your fingers wide, just take a moment to feel into your foundation. So spread the fingers, feel all ten knuckles ground down into your mouth. Try not to collapse into your front body, so see if you can knit your ribcage all the way up and in. Feel your lower belly hug towards your lower back. So from this tabletop position, we're just going to start to warm into the wrist. So I'd like you to start to um, circle your torso around the wrist joints, starting to lean the weight forward, side, back and feel the weight of your body shift from knuckle to knuckle and then start to reverse the direction of the circle opposite way this can be as slow or as fast as feels good for you we'll just ask that you try to be as mindful as possible so just focusing and trying to connect with the body with how you are today perhaps a little bit different to how you were yesterday on your mat and then starting to bring your fingers back toward your knees, wrists or heels of the hands pointing forward. Again, you're going to slightly lean back and forward. It's okay if the heel of the hand lifts away from the mat. You're starting to work into your wrist joint, into your forearms. Again, if this is too much, you don't have to lean back as far. And then forward, bring the fingers to point forward one more time. We're going to flex the heel of our hand away from the mat. So what I want you to do is lift the heel of the hand or the palm away from the mat, but stay on the fingers and the knuckles. So you're going to do that with both of your hands. So it's like you're flexing the heel of the hand away from uh, the mat. Now as you do that, you're going to start to feel a lot in your wrist. If you're not feeling enough, lean more weight into the hands. It's going to strengthen your wrist joints a little bit more. Or if you're a little bit weaker in your wrist, if you don't do a lot of wrist work, and strengthening, then you can bring the weight back into your knees. Continue for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well done. Okay, cat cow, inhale, arch your spine, chest forward, exhale, round the back, draw your navel toward your spine, tuck your chin. Inhale, arch your spine, compress the spine. Extend the heart forward, exhale, round into the back, pull your ribcage up and in and round. One more time, inhale, arch the spine, exhale, round into the back. Inhale, arch your spine, tuck your toes, downward facing dog, leading with your sit bones, lift all the way up and back into that downward dog position. So full extension through your elbows, through your arms. I want you to feel like you are pushing the mat away so much that your shoulders are lifting up out of your back. So it's like you're hanging from a pull-up bar. That's the sensation you want in the shoulders, in uh, the lats, in the side body. You want to feel that lengthening. Almost like you're hanging and stretching through your waist. So we're going to roll forward into a plank position. As you do that, I want you to bring your right knee toward your right tricep. So roll it forward, hug your right knee in with you and hug it as high as you can toward the armpit and then step it back down your facing dog. Left side, roll forward, left knee to left armpit and step it back down your facing dog. Again, roll forward, right knee as high as you can into the armpit, step it back, down dog. And again, roll forward, left knee to left tricep, roll it back. Downward facing dog. One more time each side. Roll forward and step it back. Roll forward left. Nice and high. Step it back. Inhale, extend your right leg to the sky. Bend the knee and open the hip. Breathe into your side body. Take a few inhales and exhales here. Feeling the extension as you allow your left heel to soften down toward the mat. Try to Counter stretch by extending your right knee toward the sky. 
and then straighten the legs, square off the hips and step the right foot back to the mat, opposite side, left leg lifts, bend the knee, open the hip. And again, I want you to feel that right heel sink down toward the mat. Don't worry if it's not touching the mat. I just want you to have the intention of allowing it to sink as you lift the left knee. And then straighten the left leg, square off the hips, left foot to mat. Okay, I'm gonna take off my jumper. One up. So, um, back knee, you're down, you're facing dog. We're gonna inhale, extend the right leg to the sky. Exhale, step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Left foot outside of left hand. Active squat. I want your hips in line with your knees. Extend your arms out in front. Inhale. Exhale. Come to standing with your hands to prayer at the heart. Inhale. Sweep the arms all the way up overhead. Exhale. Sit down into that active squat. Inhale. Engage the glutes. Knit the rib cage in. Hands to the mat. Exhale. Step back into plank. Inhale in your plank. Exhale. Shift slightly forward. Elbows raise. The body is lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra, tops the feet to mat, draw the shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, downward facing dog, tuck the toes, lift the hips. Inhale, extend the left leg to the sky. Exhale, step the left foot to the outside of the left hand. Right foot steps to outside of right hand, active squat. Inhale, arms out in front, knit the rib cage in. Exhale, draw the hands to prayer at the heart. Come to standing. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up. Exhale, sit down into your seat, tailbone lengthening down, inhale, lift the chest, engage the pelvic floor, exhale, hands to your mat, step into plank, inhale in your plank, exhale to lower, inhale, chest lift, to engage through the scapula as you draw the shoulders down the back, downward facing dog, lift the hips, inhale, st extend the right leg to the sky, Exhale, step the right foot to the outside of the right hand. Left foot steps forward, active squat. Hips in line with these arms out in front. Inhale. Exhale, draw the energy in toward the heart as you seal the thumbs to the chest. Inhale, keep moving with the breath. Extend arms up. Exhale, sit down into your seat. Inhale, knees drive out, rib cage in. Exhale, hands to back. Plank position. Inhale, near plank. Exhale to lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Exhale, step left foot to outside of the left hand. Right foot sits forward, sit down. Inhale, arms extend out. Exhale, pull it in toward the heart. Inhale, engage the glutes, extend the arms up. Exhale, sit down, knees drive out, rib cage in. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, hands by the mat, step back into plank. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. One more round each side. Inhale, right leg to the sky. Exhale, step the right foot forward with control. Inhale, step the left leg forward, arms out in front. Exhale, come to standing, draw the hands into prayer. Inhale, keep going. Arms lift up, exhale, sit down, knit your rib cage in, feel the hips start to warm up a little bit. Inhale, lift the chest, exhale, hands to the mat, stepping it back. Inhale, plank, exhale to lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra, exhale, downward facing dog. The last time, inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, left foot steps forward. Right foot steps forward, inhale, arms out in front. Exhale, come to standing, root down as you rise up. Inhale, extend arms to the side. Exhale, sit down into your seat. Keep that lift through the chest. Inhale, exhale, hands to the mat, stepping it back. Inhale, my strong plank, engage the glutes. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift the heart, shoulders down the back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift the hips up and back. Inhale, extend your right leg to the sky. Exhale, step the right foot to the outside of the right hand, and hold. Okay, so we're going to keep the right foot nice and wide here. If you tend to have a lot of tightness in your hamstrings and you feel you don't have the mobility quite yet, you can use blocks in the next movement. So we're going to hold here in our lizard lunge. You can also come on to natural blocks, which are your fingertips. And then from here, I'd like you to inhale into your chest. Exhale, you're going to sweep the hips back, flex into the right foot, and straighten the right leg. 
Inhale, come forward, lift the chest, lunge. Exhale, shift it back, straighten right leg. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, go back. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, go back. This time, inhale, come forward. Hold it here. Extend your arms out in front if it's not too much. You can stay on blocks if you need it. If it's way too much for that left quad, if it's burning on fire, then maybe you need to drop the left knee down to the mat or see if it changes anything by activating into your left glute. Feel the left heel extend back. Reach forward through the hands or if you want to come to elbows, whatever feels more engaging for you, more strengthening. Connect with your breath for three. Hold wherever you are for two and one. Walk the hands in, plant the left hand underneath the left shoulder and spin both toes to the right. Lift your right arm to the sky. Now you can stay here with the right heel in line with the left thumb. Or if that's way too much for you, you can tuck the right foot slightly back in line with your hip, okay? So it's more of a hip opener the further your right heel is forward or more advanced, okay? It doesn't mean that that is better or worse. It just means we're all going to look a little bit different in this pose. So holding it here, I'd like you to extend your right arm forward over your right ear. Lift your hips, inhale. Exhale, you're going to sink the left hip down and extend your right arm back. Again, inhale, lift up, right arm overhead. Exhale, sink it down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Two more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Last one. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift the right arm to the sky. Lift your hips. Thread your right arm underneath and walk both hands to the left. Both toes spin to the left. So we're in a wide leg forward fold. You're going to tight, slightly pigeon toe your feet. So toes slightly pointing in. Engage into your quadriceps. Hands underneath your shoulders. And just for a moment, I want you to move a little bit left to right. So you're bending into one knee and then the other, allowing your hips to sink with the lunge. Allow your breath to deepen, giving yourself the space, the time to connect. And then straightening into both legs, inhale to lift and exhale to fold. You can use the hands if you need, you can plant the hands, or you can bring the hands to the ankles, the calves, whatever feels, whatever feels better for you. Try to tilt your sit bones toward the sky. Draw the lower belly up and in, engaging through Mula and Uriana Bandas. Shift the weight slightly into the toes. Okay, and then hands to your mat. Inhale, extend your chest forward. Exhale, walk your hands to the front of the mat. As you do that, you can change the position of your right foot so the right toe points directly forward. Check that your right heel is aligned with the arch of the back foot. They're setting up for warrior two. A nice wide stance. Right knee over right ankle. Lift all the way up and come into that hold, warrior two. So soften the shoulders away from the ears. And instead of activating into your arms and your shoulders, I want you to try and soften the shoulders and the arms and activate instead of your fingers. So spread your fingers wide. Feel the energy through each fingertip. So your glutes active, make sure right knee is set over right ankle. You should be able to see a sliver of the right knee toes to the inside of the right knee. Knit your rib pigeon. Embracing this challenge of holding your warrior two. So the pose that we often come in and out of in our, in our practice, in vinyasa classes that we go to, but often it's not held. So it's a really strong pose. You're going to start to feel a lot of heat being built through the legs through the glutes, try your best to relax into it. Feel all four corners of both feet. Try not to come out of the lunge in the right knee and try not to shift all the way forward into the right leg. So keep shoulders over the hips for five, four, energy through fingers, three, two, one, side angle. Okay, finally, bring your right elbow to the right knee, and that time toward this guy. So find your side body active here. Try not to collapse into that right elbow. You find that right elbow is simply just 
soft on the knee, just like lightly contacting it. We're going to be alternating from here to a wild thing. So I'm going to get everybody to bring the left hand down to the mat, spin onto the ball of the back foot. Now, if wild thing is not in your practice, you can simply spin onto the ball of the back foot, lift your right arm. Next step, spin, spin onto the outer edge of the left foot, step your right toes behind you. Inhale, lift your chest, extend your right arm overhead. And exhale, right knee to chest, look to the front of your mat, step your right foot to the front of the mat. You can use your right hand to help you do that. Drop the left heel, right elbow, right knee, left arm lift, inhale, side angle. Exhale, left hand down, wild thing, right foot behind you, inhale, lift your hips. Exhale, step the right foot to the front of your mat. Again, you can use your right hand to assist you. If you want to bring your right hand to the inside of the right foot, now you can inhale, left arm lifts. Exhale, left hand down. Wild thing. Step right foot behind you. Lift your hips, engage your glutes. Inhale into front body. Exhale, step right foot to front of mat. One more round, right hand down, left arm lifts, inhale. Exhale, really getting into those hips. Well thing. Right toe behind you, lift the front body, inhale. Exhale, right foot steps to front of mat. Side angle, right arm to elbow or right hand to inside of front. Left arm lifts. And then left hand down to the mat. I want you to spin both toes again to the right. That um, hip stretch again, right arm to the sky. And then we're going to bend into both knees and stack our right knee over our left. So we're coming to Gomukhasana, Calphate Pose, Shoelace Pose, whatever it is that you call it. So the further the heels are out away from the hips, the deeper the stretch for the hips. So if you feel like that's way too much, bring your heels a little bit closer toward you. But it is important that you are active in your feet. So you want to be really grounding through the outer edges of your feet. You can stack your hands on your knees if you like. Sit up tall through the spine if this is way too much for your hips. Please do feel free to elevate your hips slightly, maybe on a block or a blanket, a cushion. So we're just going to take a few minutes here. Firstly, to allow our breath to slow down. So those transitions were quite strong from our sight angle to our wild thing. So I want you to take time to reconnect with the breath. Often in our breath is the first thing to be compromised when we're focusing so much on pushing ourselves physically. When really, if we focus on the breath, the physical will will progress and will happen a lot easier, a lot quicker. Take this time, perhaps you'd like to close your eyes. Feel the rhythm of your breath. See if you can deepen the inhale, deepen the exhale. Notice your thoughts in this stillness. Perhaps you're finding it quite difficult to not attach yourself to your thoughts or to those stories that your thoughts create. Remember, they're simply stories. See if you can take a moment to observe the type of thoughts that are coming in in this moment, uh, cropping up, and see if you can identify who is coming up with the thoughts or where the thoughts are coming from. Are they attached to past instances? Are they projections of what you hope for the future or what you are anxious will happen in the future? Neither of these situations are your reality. They have nothing to do with where you are, so try to come back to your breath. Take one more full deep inhale, one more full deep exhale. 
next transition is quite tricky. So we're going to try to come forward onto the outer edges of our feet, standing with our legs crossed. So I want you to flex your feet quite a lot. So really grounding down through the pinky toe on the side of your feet. You're going to bring your hands in front. Bring the weight forward onto your hands. Push into your hands and lift your knees. So you're now pushing the outer edges of your feet down into the mat. You might need to shorten the stance between the feet. And then try to come all the way up. So it feels really awkward, I know. Uh, try to squeeze in through your inner thighs. Bring your hands to prayer. Lift your chest. And then we're going to start to bend into the left knee. So I want you to bend into, or sorry, into the right knee. And we're going to start to bend into the right knee. You're going to bend into the right knee. Lead the weight into that right foot. And then as you do that, you're going to start to slide that left foot back toward the back of your mat. And then plant the left hand underneath the left shoulder. And we're back into that hip opener. Lift your right hand to the sky. And then right hand down. Spin both toes to point toward the front of your mat. Drop your left knee. And half splits. Ardha Padmanasana. Straighten your right leg. You might need to slide that right heel forward slightly. If you have sensitive knees, I'm using about three mats here. So if you are only on one mat and you're feeling pain in the left knee, then please do feel free to double over your mat or get a blanket underneath the knee. Collapsing the right toes back towards you. You're going to keep your pelvis in line. So hips are square. Spine as long as possible. So try not to round too much into the back. If you're struggling to touch the mat, then find blocks underneath the hands. Okay, I'd like everybody to tuck the left toe, and you're going to start to walk the hands back. And we're going to stand on our Achilles, or stand on our toes, and sit on our Achilles. So you'll see the way my left big toe is rooting down. Now I try to describe this as, again, we're trying to lift up toward the sky. So instead of collapsing all your weight down into that left ankle, I want you to imagine like you're pushing the floor away through that, those left toes. And as you do that, you'll feel your bum become a little bit lighter, as if you're trying to even hover the bum above the left Achilles. Flex the right foot, and see if you can balance by bringing your hands to curve the heart. Now this is really challenging. Stay here. If, if you want to progress, then see if you can lean back a little bit. Push down into the left toes and see if you can hover your right heel away from the mat. Now, I can only do this while waving my arms around. Maybe you can do it a little bit more elegantly. Trying to find the balance. Hold wherever you are for five. Play with it for four, three, two, and bring the right heel down. Don't worry if you are falling out of that. It takes time and focus, okay? So especially when you're doing something for the first time, always a little bit more uh, distracted and attached to that end goal instead of just feeling it. So don't worry if you want to pause and try it a few times. It is a lot of fun. So we're going to lunge forward into the right knee and untuck the left toes. Sweep your arms all the way up overhead into a low lunge position. The so shoulders are stacked over your hips. Try to draw the lower belly up and in. Try not to collapse into your joints. You want to really push them out away through your feet. Draw your right heel towards your left knee like you're squeezing them toward each other. Engage into the left glute cat to shake your arms. So you're going to cross your right elbow underneath your left. Eagle wrap your um, arms. So crossing at elbows and at wrists. So we're going to try to come forward into our full Garudasana eagle balance without using the left leg or foot to come forward. So if you need, you can lean forward, tuck the left toe, drive off the left toe. But let's see if we can do it without using the left toes. So we're going to lean forward, bring all the weight onto that right leg, slide the left knee in, and then push down into the right foot, like doing a little squat, and the left knee hugs up towards your chest. Cross your left thigh over, eagle wrap your legs. You're going to see if you can maybe cross the left foot behind the right calf. Sit down into your seat, lift your elbows, find your balance, hold, wiggle wobble like me. For five, sit down, lift the chest. For four, squeeze your inner thighs. For three, engage the core, the glutes. For two, one, and then fold. You're going to fold over the right leg, extend your left leg to the sky, standing splits just for a moment. If you wanted to bring your right hand behind the calf, you can to fold into it a little bit more. And then inhale, chest forward, fingertips to mat, exhale, bend. And bring your left shin to the mat, left knee to outside of right ankle. 
sit all the way down into your seat. So we're coming to Ardhanasana and Rasana, our seated twist. If this is way too much, you can extend the left leg straight. So we're going to twist to the right. I'd like you to bring your right fingertips behind you. Ground strongly into the right big toe mound. Extend your left arm to the sky, twist. And exhale, either arm around the knee or elbow to outside of knee. So we're twisting to the right. Try to deepen the breath. With each inhale, pushing down into your foundation as you lift up to twist with that extension through the spine. Again, with each inhale, see if you can lift a little bit taller. Exhale, twist. There's not a lot of weight on those right fingertips. We're trying to keep our shoulders stacked over our hips. So the fingertips behind you are just a little kickstand, but not a lot of weight there. One more full inhale to lengthen. One more full exhale to twist. And then back to center. We're going to come to pinching on the left. So you can actually lean all the way down to the left hip and swing your right leg all the way to the back of the mat and lean off the left hip. Now you're probably going to have to adjust a little bit here. So Push down into your hands, bring your left knee as right or wider than your torso. So if your hands shoulder away, I always bring my left knee to my left wrist. Try to bring that left foot a little bit further forward than you're comfortable with. So flexing into that left foot, make sure your right leg is fully straight, that the right ankle isn't doing anything funny. And then we're going to come high in the fingertips. So I'd like you to lift up, engage into your right glute, and notice how that stabilizes the hips a little bit. So I'd like you to draw your lower belly up and in toward your spine. Push down into your fingers. And then we're going to see if we can lift our pinky fingers away from the mat. Drive down through those right toes, through that left shin. Come off the, lift the ring finger. Keep your chest lifted, keep your back engaging. Lift your middle fingers. And you can see where this is going, lift your index fingers, only on your thumb, stay here. Or if you want, sweep your arms back, lift your chest, engage your right glute, engage your core, engage your back body for five, four, three, two, one. Hands to mat, fold forward into your pigeon. We'll only be here for about 30 seconds to allow your body to sink into it. Notice that engagement that we just applied and see if it has changed your experience of the pose at all. One more full deep inhale, one more full deep exhale. And I'd like you to come to your hands. You're going to tuck your right toe, lift your right knee, and extend the left leg up into that three legged dog. Bend the knee, open the hip. You can circle out the knee if you want in one direction and then the other direction and then downward facing dog. So take a moment in your down dog just to again find some awareness of the effect of your class so far on your body. Reconnect with the breath. Okay and then we're going to do the same on the other side. So extend left leg to the sky and Exhale, step the left foot to the outside of the left hand. Lift your lunge. So we want a nice wide stance here. Left toes pointing forward, so we're not externally rotating the hip. Neutral position with the foot. Engaging into your right glute, lifting up to your right kneecap and driving back through the right heel. So we're going to stay here and then we're going to move. So I like you to take a full deep inhale. And as you exhale, we're going to straighten the left leg again. You can use blocks here to shift your hips back. Lunge forward, inhale, chest extends forward, exhale, shift it back, extend. Three more, inhale, come forward, exhale, shift it back. Two more, inhale, come forward, exhale, shift it back. Last time, inhale, come forward, exhale, move it back. And then come forward into the left knee, we're going to hold here. So you can either stay on your hands, you might come onto the full palms, you might come onto elbows, or you might start to extend your arms forward. So this for me is the most challenging, having that energy forward through the chest. 
and that energy back through the right heel. I really feel that extension through my entire body and that heat being built in the hips, in the right leg. Hold wherever you are. Deep breaths into your belly for five, for four, three, two, one. Walk the hands in, plant the right hand underneath the right shoulder, and spin both toes to the left. So again, you might need to modify this pose. You might need to choke heel that left foot back slightly. You want to be on the knife edge of both feet. Left hand to this guy. Flexing into the feet, extend your left arm over your left ear. So we're going to do these dip, hip dips. You're going to inhale deeply, extend your left arm forward, exhale, sink the hip down and extend the left arm back. Push down as you lift up, inhale, exhale to dip down. Inhale, lift up, exhale, dip down. Inhale, lift up, exhale, dip. Last time, inhale, lift. Exhale, dip. Inhale, lift. Lift your left arm to the sky. Take a full deep inhale. Exhale, thread your left arm under your torso. Walk both hands to the right and spin both toes to the right. So, we warmed up quite a lot here, so there's no need to um, bend or sway the hips. If you want to add in, you can. Or if you want to come just straight into your wide leg forward fold, any variation if you wanted to. Re reach for the toes, you can interlock your peace fingers to your big toes, lift up as you ground down to your toes, shoulders active, upper back working, pelvic floor active, crown of head sinking down towards your butt. Breathe for five, hold for four, three, two, one, extend your chest forward, Walk your hands to the front of your mat, setting up for warrior two. So you want to set up your left heel in line with the arch of the back foot. And we're going to windmill all the way up and open into warrior two. So a nice wide distance between the feet. Again, you want that upside down L shape with that left leg. Ground down through the outer edge of the back foot. So you'll notice if your torso is leaning forward, it's going to be a lot more weight than that left leg. It's going to get really tired. You want to use both legs fully. Again, try not to crunch up into the shoulders, soften the shoulders, and find that energy through the fingers instead. Push your hip points slightly forward as you engage into your glutes. So like we did on the right side, we're going to hold here. I want you to feel the challenge, embrace the challenge, and see where you can adjust, where you can focus your strength. Direct your breath. Perhaps you want to close your eyes. And simply feel, listen to the sound of your breath. Are you using both legs? Can you ground into the outer edge of your right foot? Can you lift the arches of both feet? Hold here for five, active through your fingers for four, three, two, one. Well done, left elbow down, right arm to the sky. So finding your side angle position, try not to flare out through the rib cage, knit the rib cage in. Now we're gonna transition from here to wild thing. So right hand comes down to the mat, spin onto the ball of the back foot, you can hold here if this is enough, or drop the right heel, step the left toes behind you, extend your arm overhead, lift your hips. Inhale, funny. Exhale, step the left foot all the way forward again. Drop the right heel, left elbow to the knee, right arm to the sky, inhale. Exhale, right hand down. Drop the right heel, step the left toes behind you. Wild thing, inhale. Exhale, step the left foot forward. You can use the left hand to, this, to assist. You can bring the left hand to the inside of the left foot now if you like, inhale. Exhale, transition, wild thing. Engage the glutes, inhale. Exhale, last time we're doing this. Left foot forward, drop the right heel. Find your side angle, engage the glutes. And last time. Right hand down, spin onto the outer edge of the right foot, left arm overhead, lift your hips. And step the left foot forward. Drop the right heel, side angle. Nice, well done. Okay, bring your right hand down to the mat, spin both toes to the left, lift your left arm, find that hip opener, 
or side plank modification, bend your right knee and see if your left knee to stack over your right. So for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to turn around so you can see me. And so the left knee is over the right. If you want to extend the bottom leg straight, if this is way too much, you can. Remember to try and stay active in your feet. The more you flex the feet, the more you're going to feel it in your hips rather than your knees. You should never feel these, um, you should never feel twinging in your knees. So we're going to take this time to really reconnect with our breath. Remember, in this stillness, you might not feel very comfortable. You might actually feel a little bit frustrated, a little bit bored, fidgety. I often get like this. It's usually a reflection of where I'm at emotionally in my week. If I'm overwhelmed or anxious about things, stillness is never an optimum place to be. Or my body perceives it that way anyway. And your body starts to try to distract you, tries to fill that space with adjustments and changes. See what happens when you sit still. Allow the discomfort to be. when we experience discomfort, if we, when we give ourselves the time to acknowledge what happens when we are uncomfortable, what crops up when we are uncomfortable, is when we can let this, these things go. So allow them to move through you rather than constantly resist, constantly block. Feel free to close your eyes as we focus on our breath. Take one more full inhale. One more full exhale. Okay, so I'd like you to flex your feet. You're going to drive down to the outer edges of your feet again. We're going to lean forward onto our hands. Push down into the hands, lift your knees. So you're gonna try to straighten into your legs. You might need to shimmy around here a little bit and then try your best to come all the way up to standing. So you'll see the way I'm standing on the knife edge or the pinky toe mount side of my feet. Bring your hands to prayer. And we're gonna to start to bend into that left knee. So I want you to start to bend into the left knee. So a lot of the weight's gonna come into that knee. And as you do that, lean to the right and then slide that right foot toward the back of your mat and then plant your right hand down. Okay, so we're in this um, modified side plank or hip opener again. Lift your left arm, push them out of the way through your right arm, and then spin both toes to face the front of your mat. So I'm facing the back of my mat just so that it's easier for you guys to watch. Um, but you should still be facing the front of your mat. So left knee over left ankle, we're gonna shift back into our half splits. So maybe you need to slide that left heel forward to give yourself a little bit more space. Your hips should be stacked over that right knee. So for me, I'm going to bend a lot into the left knee. I'm still working with a very old injury. So for me, I need to keep this knee bent so that I can breathe. So just holding it here. In your Ardha Hanumanasana, if you have those bits, you can Always come to full splits, but here I want you to focus more so on the breath, coming down to breathe with ease. Okay, and everybody then tuck your right toe. We're going to start to walk the hands toward the back of our mat. The left heel will slide with us until we are sitting on our right Achilles and our right knee comes away from the mat. So again, you can use blocks underneath the hands here. We're going to activate into the left foot, so draw the toes back, back towards you and then come to your balance on the right toes. So again, I want you to push down into the right toes, almost like you're trying to hover your bum away from the right heel. Then slightly lean back, engage your core, and see if you can hover the left heel. Even if it's just a millimeter, a centimeter, whatever it is, hold wherever you are. Play around with it for five, four, this side is harder, I think, three, two, one. Left heel down, well done. We're gonna lunge forward into the left knee. You're probably going to slide that left and heel or foot forward. 
So untuck the back toes. Keep the arms up overhead into that low lunge position on the left side. I want you to drive down through the feet, lift up through the fingers, lift up through the torso. Feel your right glute activate. Bend into your elbows, bring your left arm under your right. Cross the elbows, cross the wrists. Nice, okay, so again, if you want to use the right toes to drive forward, you can, or we're going to try to lean forward. Bring all the weight into that left leg. Slide the right knee in, and then drive down into the left foot and hug your right knee toward your chest. I think I kind of cheated there. We're going to bring the right thigh over the left, Garudasana. Sit down into your seat, lift your chest, engage through your pelvic floor, squeeze through inner thighs for five, squeeze through elbows for four, lift the elbows three, sit down two, one, stand and split, fold over your left leg, right leg to the sky. Don't worry too much about depth. Slow down the breath, weight in the hands and the left toes. And then slowly bend both knees, bring your right shin to the mat, bring your right knee to the outside of your left ankle, sit your bum all the way down, Ardha Matsya Hirasana. So left heel to outside of right knee, we're going to be twisting to the left this time. If you want to extend the right leg, you can. Bring your left fingertips behind you again, remember we're not sinking all the way back, shoulders stay over the hips. Extend your right arm to the sky, exhale, twist to the left. So you can either hook the arm around the knee if that feels good for you, or if you want, you can bring the elbows to the outside of the knee. We're trying not to force our body into the twist. So you want to feel that inhale length and draw your belly in away from your left thigh. Give yourself the space to twist past the thigh. Relax the shoulders. Allow the breath to be steady. And allow your spine to naturally move into the twist as you exhale. One more full deep inhale. One more full exhale. And release. Pinch it on the right. So you're going to lean onto your right hip. Extend your left leg back. Use your hands to come off the right hip. Again, you're going to adjust here a little bit so that your right knee is wide as your torso, right foot is flexed. And fully extending through the left leg and toes. So we're going to come high on our fingertips first. I want you to engage into your left glutes. And just notice again how much stability that gives you in your hips. I want you to drive down through your fingers, lift up to your chest, and use the back muscles. So draw your scapula together by engaging through the rhomboids. We're going to lift our pinky finger. You can stay here or lift your ring finger. You can stay here, breathe, or lift your middle finger. Index finger. Stay here or extend your arms back again. Rhomboids engage. Middle back working for five. Engage your left glute for four. Lift your lower belly up and in for three, two, one. Fold. Come down to four arms. You can extend fully if you want. We're going to hold it here just for about 30 seconds. Find your breath. Let go again of any images that you have of how this pose should look. The perfect pose does not exist simply your body and the shape you are making. As long as there is no pain, you are perfect where you are. One more full deep breath into that right hip. One more full exhale, maybe through the mouth. And then plant the hands. Down dog or three legged dog, tuck the left toe, extend the right leg to the sky, bend the knee, open the hip. You can circle it out if you want in one direction and the other direction. And then downward facing dog, both feet to the mat. Take a moment, allow your arms to extend. And slowly make your way to your knees. And then slowly make your way to your back. So bring your feet out to one side. So weep your legs out in front. Scoot your bum forward. And we're going to roll down to the back. 
So just to finish, I'd like you to cross your right thigh over your left. Eagle, wrap your legs. Scoot your bum to the right and bring both knees to the left. You can either cactus shape your arms or you can make a T-shape with your arms. Bring your gaze to the right. Allow the entire body to be heavy. To release. Thank you so much again for practicing with me and sharing your practice.